All right, our next lesson is called Reexpressing Data. We're going to do something here that's going to seem counterintuitive. Uh, for many years in algebra, you've been told if you have an equation, if you multiply just one side of the equation by two, uh, you no longer have an equation that is equal, correct? Uh, or if you just square rooted one side of the equation, you've been told, well, that's wrong. Uh, the equation won't be true anymore. And that is, that is the truth. But as you have learned already, statistics is a different ball game. And we, we do some different things I I with this course. And so let's take a look at what we mean by re-expressing data. First of all, why would we need to re-express data? What if you collect data, make a histogram, and it is very skewed? You're like, hmm, man, I wish I could apply uh, z-scores and the normal curve and I can find some percentages uh, but you can't if it's skewed well we have a way to re-express the data in some cases to make it more symmetric and normal shaped what if the two side-by-side -side box plots are so much different in spread it's really hard to do a comparison we can re-express one of them or both of them and make them more alike to do better comparisons. Curve scatter plot. Well, we've just got done dealing with finding lines of best fit. So a curve, we well, we can't force it into a curve. Well, actually, we can now. We can take many different types of curves and we could linearize it, form, uh, make it turn into a line <clears throat> so we can apply all of our new techniques and find a line of best fit, make predictions, find R squared, and it's all perfectly legal. And what happens if a scatter plot is all clumped down at the bottom and then it fans out? We can make it spread out more evenly uh, to again use our regression techniques on it. These are some reasons why we would re-express or change the data. Okay, here's an example. We do a histogram. We see the data is very skewed to the right. We can make it more symmetric by taking a logarithm of all the x values, of all the values. So let's say these are the x values. Let's magically take a logarithm of them. And look, it made it more symmetric. And now we can find a z-score and use our standard deviation and find percentages. Skewed left, these are a little tougher but we can sometimes square every value and it will make it more symmetric also. Here's an example of the, the curved scatter plot I was talking about, a curved relationship. Well, we can't really use our lines of best fit and our R squared and, and uh, make predictions that way. So w why don't we take the log of all the Y values, just the Y values, and oftentimes you'll see that happen. The curve will flatten out and now we can apply and find a line of best fit. Let's say we have a physical relationship. Sometimes when you're dealing with uh, let's say length versus weight of people or animals uh, or other physical relationships you often get a, a curved uh, relationship sometimes taking the log of just the y values doesn't work sometimes you have to take the log of both all the y values and all the x values and that will linearize your scatter plot making it more easy to work with uh, sometimes you can even do this take the square root of all of your y values and that will linearize your data and even taking one, taking the reciprocal of all your y values. Sometimes that works. So when you are approached with a scatter plot you want to, that's curved and you want to linearize it, sometimes you have to try multiple different ways before you can find what will linearize it, if anything will work at all. Unfortunately, a parabolic shape, there's no way to uh, re-express this into a line. Okay, let's take a specific example. We have the length and weight of 25 alligators. 
Let's see what the relationship looks like. We're going to make a scatter plot, of course. The y value is the is going to be the weight because we would like to take the length of the alligator and predict the weight of it. It's easier to get the it would be easier to get the length of an alligator as opposed to the weight. Lexi Schultz, please report to Miss O in the cafeteria. Lexi Schultz to Miss O in the cafeteria. Alright, so you see we definitely have a curve and certainly have some we could probably call these leverage points so we got some heavy some big mama or some big daddy alligators out out there and but either way we are forming a definite curve here so we so a line is not the best model so all the stuff we just learned we have to throw out the window for this curve right well maybe we could linearize it one way we said may work with curve scatter plots is to take the logarithm of all the y values so let's take the logarithm of all the weights. And this is Minitab. Uh, we will use this uh, shortly. So you might learn something from watching here. I went to Calculate, Calculator. And I want to store all the results in this column. And I want to take the logarithm. So I'm going to go down here and look for logarithm, log base 10, of all the weights. Hit OK and this is what we mean by changing or re-expressing the entire data set. So all the weights are no longer in pounds, they are now in log of pounds. So we have much different numbers. Did it work? Did it take our curve and did it flatten it out? Let's take a look. Now I want to graph log of the weights. So yeah, you can't just put weight and length in here again because now we're, we need to show uh, what the log of the weights looks like against the length. Length stays the same. How about that? It worked. Looks pretty good. We better make sure though, right, with the residual plot. Let's take a look. We're going to go to uh, regression, regression, and we want log of the weight. I'll just double click on log of the weight. It'll put it up here. Put length down here. Go to graphs. We want to have them do the residuals versus the x value, which is the length. That's in there. Click OK. Residual plot. So you guys are now experts at residual plots and you see no pattern here. Random scatter and above and below the line uh, no pattern, so a line now is an appropriate model, but the line is not going to be just length and weight, it's going to be length and log of weight. So now we could fit a line to it. Let's do a fitted line plot. Log of weight versus length, click OK, and there you have it. Ooh, look at that R-squared, 96%. That's a very high R-squared. This is going to be a useful model for making predictions with alligators. But look at the equation now. Yes, we have to account for the fact that we took the log of the weights. So now it's going to be log of the weight. Should be a little hat above here. Minitab doesn't do that. And here's our y-intercept. Here's our slope. And there's our x uh, variable, the length. R squared is high. Uh, and the last thing I'd like to point out is when you do make predictions here, you have a little bit of math to do now. So if I, if I want to know the weight of an alligator that's 110 inches long, okay? Well, the, the model would predict right there, right? But that's given me the log of the weight. I would like it in good old fashioned pounds, right? I don't want it to tell me 2.1. I don't know what that means, right? Or 2.3. So you'll put in the 110 into your equation like you normally do. That's the length. You'll multiply it by this number. You'll add this number to it. But that'll be giving you the log of the, of the answer. So we'll have to undo the logarithm. You might have to think back to some algebra 2. To undo a log, you take both sides to the base 10. And so we would take 10 to, the, to this power, 10 to the 2.3 power, whatever that is, and that would be back into pounds. So there you have it, AP Stat class. Uh, we'll talk more about this in class tomorrow. 
make sure you uh, understand what you just watched because we'll have a short bell ringer on this tomorrow. Have a good night.